In Maya, we use materials to define the character of the object's surface. Now, that surface can define how the object interacts with light. It can determine the color of the object, the shininess of the object, whether or not the object is bumpy or smooth. It can really define a whole host of parameters. And the material is what contains and controls all of these parameters. Now, materials will change from renderer to renderer. So I'm going to first show you some basic Maya materials that work for most renderers, and then we'll move on to some Arnold-specific materials a little bit later. So let's take a look at these objects here. Now, I want to assign materials to these. So the best way to do that is to just highlight them. So I'm going to highlight this first sphere and cylinder. And if we go into our rendering menu set, you should, under lighting and shading, have a number of different options here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and tear this off. And you'll see we have assign new material, we have assign favorite material, and we also have assign existing material. Now, this will grow depending upon how many materials we have in the scene. Now, if I right click over this, You'll see that in the marking menu, towards the bottom, we have this exact same menu. So new, favorite, and existing material, and I can get to those here. So that's a great way to get to it very quickly. Now, if we assign new material, this will bring up a list of all the materials that are available for Maya. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of them. And if we want to, we can click on, say, surface here and refine it to just the basic Maya surfaces. We can go to volumetric, which is mostly light-based, so such as light fog and that sort of stuff. And then we also have Arnold-specific shaders. So again, we'll get to the Arnold stuff in just a bit. So we're going to focus mostly on the Maya surface shaders. Now, under favorite material, we have some of the favorite Maya materials here. So we have Blin Lambert. We also have Fong and Fong E. So each one of those is a specific material. We also have on our rendering shelf all of these little shader balls, and they do the exact same thing. So this is what's called Blin, Lambert, Fong. We also have a Fong E, and we also have one called Anastropic. So I'm going to go ahead and assign a basic Lambert material to these, and let's see what that does. So I'm going to go into Lighting, Shading, Assign Favorite Material, Lambert. Now this creates a new material called Lambert 2. You may wonder what happened to Lambert 1, and that's actually the default material in Maya, so you don't want to touch Lambert 1. So let's go ahead and just work with Lambert 2. Now this has all sorts of attributes that we can change. Now each particular type of shader or material will have different attributes, but typically they'll fall into several different categories. One is color, so if I click on this, I can select and change the color of that material. And I have a nice color picker here that I can use. So if I want this to be maybe an orange color, I can certainly do that. I also have an eyedropper that allows me to pick colors out of the scene. Now, in addition to this, I have transparency. And as you can see, this is going transparent. I have what's called ambient color. And that's basically kind of the glow of the object. Now you can see it here, a little bit more rendered, but you can also see it in the viewport just as long as you have viewport 2.0 turned on. So again, ambience and then incandescence is very similar, but it turns the object into more of a light. And then we have some additional parameters here, such as the brightness of your diffuse color and a translucent setting. Now this is a very basic material. Lamberts do not have shininess or reflectivity. So that's, in a lot of cases, the difference between different types of shaders or materials is how they handle reflectivity and shininess. So let's take a look at another one here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this next pair. And let's go ahead and add in a blend. And this time I'm just going to right click over this, assign favorite material, blend. Or I could click on the shelf and select this one. Now this brings up a material called Blin 1, and again, we can change colors. So if I wanted to, I could maybe make it a color that looks something like this. 
And also notice that just by default, this has specular highlights. So you can see that we have two lights in this scene right here and here, and those are showing up in the highlights. So we have color, we have transparency, just as before, we have ambient color. But when we scroll down, here's where a blend material is different. It's how it handles that specular highlight. So we have an eccentricity control, which controls how sharp or point-like that highlight is versus how diffuse it is. Then we have a specular roll-off, which is how bright it is. We have the color of that specularity. And then we also have a reflectivity control, which we're not going to see here, but when we render, this is how reflective that surface is. Now, another one would be either Fong or Fong E, and both of these work very similarly. Now, I'm going to use Fong E, so I'm going to select it here from the shelf, and we have Fong E. And as I go into that, you'll see that again, we have color and transparency. So let's go ahead and add a slightly different color to this. And then again, transparency and ambient. And again, the big difference in this is how it handles specularity. So this one has a roughness control, as well as a highlight size, whiteness, and then a specular color. So these are a couple of different controls that are a little bit different. And then again, we have reflectivity, which we can turn up or down, and we won't see it in this particular viewport. Now, another one is called anastropic. Now, anastropy is just another way of calculating specularity. So let's go ahead and apply an anastropic material to this, and I'm gonna do this from the rendering shelf. And as you can see, the highlight on this is not round, and that's the real key of anastropic highlights. They have directions, so it'll be shinier in one direction than it is in another. Now again, we still have color transparency and all of that. So let's go ahead and just bring in a color here. And one of the things you'll notice with this is that the specularity is vertical. So if I click off of this, you'll see that I have these kind of vertical stripes. And that gives a very specific character to that surface. Now, if I select one or both of these objects, I can go back into that anastropic material and we can change this. So I can change the angle of this. Now for this particular object, I like it being at zero, which is vertical. We can also have the spread. So again, I can sharpen or blur it out. So if I want a really sharp highlight, I can do that. And then also the spread in Y and then the roughness of the surface, as well as what's called a Fresnel index. And again, all of these just control the highlight. And then we can also manipulate the specular color. Now, these are just some of the basic materials that we have available in Maya. Now, the big difference between these is how it calculates specularity. And specularity is very important to how the eye determines what a surface is made of. So when you create materials in Maya, be sure you pay attention to how specularity looks.